with a quorum. The council's in session. This is the recessed continuation of the recessed meeting. Uh, when we had last completed our work, we had finished, I believe, 20, Amendment 21 to the capital budget. The motion before us is the capital budget as amended. That is the moved what? Well, it is moved. It's, if you want to vote on adopting it, it's now time to debate it and to vote on it. Council President Kinnear. I'd like to move that we vote upon the budget now instead of moving it to any other portion of tonight's agenda. Okay. Motion and a second. Well, it's, it has been moved and seconded. Right, we're just going to vote on it now. So it's now time to vote. If there's, is there discussion? I've asked three times. Thank you. The next speaker, speaker is Council Member Maniacci. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to address my colleagues this evening. I will not be supporting the capital budget this evening. Debbie. This is not my vision of the city. This is not my dream. These are not my priorities. These are not my constituents' priorities represented in this budget this evening. The operating budget is very much an investment in the good people that we have working for us in the city, and I'll be happy to support that this evening. But the capital budget was an opportunity for us to do what was right, to do what was just, to lay forward a path for the city for the future. Alder Subek mentioned that her district has had home values drop of 10%. And I ask, how are we supposed to fund our city and the needs that we need? How are we supposed to do this when we're not having new construction, when we are sitting at quite a bit of, of commercial space open? I'm sitting on car lots on East Washington Avenue. How are we supposed to get investment here? How are we supposed to reinvest in our community? The priorities that are outlined in this capital budget it is not what I will represent. And for many of my constituents who are young adults who want to know if they need to stay here or if they're going to go to Milwaukee, to Chicago, to Portland, to New York, I say that we have really nothing to offer them here. Where are we on jobs? Where are we on developing good paying jobs for new families? Where are we in investing in housing? Where are we in investing and in forwarding our community? And this battle was very much a battle of generations, a battle of interests. For all the talk that we have had about this community, about what is happening at the state capitol, about what's happening in our nation with the 1%, I'd like to call them Fred Moe's, about what money and power and, you know, use whatever adjective you want, coercion, corruption, what that brings to this community. And I am so sick and tired of seeing good city employees feel like they can't speak their minds, like their jobs are in jeopardy, like their voice has been silenced. And I have a microphone here. And this is what I'm here to do, is to represent and to speak for those who cannot. And it's really easy when you have money and power to get your message across. And I have fought very hard on this project, above board, for the right reasons, for my district, for not just my district, but for the city, because I look at districts like Alder Subex, Anita Weirs, and what's happening in our city. And I say, how do we solve this? How do we put forward a vision of the city that isn't already been done before? How do we bring new ideas and creative ideas and creative people to the table? And I'm watching city, city managers retire. Folks get very nervous about, is this a city that they want to continue investing in? And we are so lazy because we have so many great government jobs. And I will tell you, in my day job, working at a cafe, working for tips, 
And our customers, our public employees, how many fewer of them are able to come in and spend money? And we are going to see that more and more and more, and we are going to fall behind. And so until we're ready to work together, until we're ready to put the interests of the city at large first, not parochial interests, not special groups, not constituent groups, not neighborhood association presidents, but say, what do we do as the city to move this forward? We are going to fail. And the more that I hear from this body, the more that I'm disappointed. And this very frequently turns into my district versus your district. And that's not the way it should be. And I'd like to think that along this process, I have worked very to reach out to my colleagues, to reach out to them on, on issues, on issues that are of concern not just to their districts, but to the city as a whole. And I think in many ways, this capital budget completely sells the city and its future short. And if this is a future that you're happy with, with school districts struggling, with home values struggling, with increased social service needs, then fine. You know, some of you have constituents that are doing just fine, but there's a lot of parts that aren't. And we have to be on top of our strategy. And it's so easy to get lost. It's so easy to put parochial interests first. And it's very easy to take the easy way out. I ask my colleagues to do what's right, to take the right path for the city. And to do what's in the right interest of this body moving forward in the future. Because it's not just about any one of us and how long we may be on this, this council, but it has to do with what the city will be in the future. And I very much believe that my colleagues have completely set the city back 30 years. I presume Mayor Soglin won't be here in 30 years to tell us how it compared to 30 years ago. But I'm very concerned at the trajectory of the city. I'm very concerned at what's happening. And Madison is supposed to be held as a beacon, as a shining light. And, the, and the, the suppression that I have seen in this process, and the twisting of arms, and the coercion, and the threats, is not a government that I'm proud of. It's not a system. And if citizens can't believe in their local government, how are they supposed to believe in, the, in, in higher levels of government? And you wonder why there's so much apathy. You wonder why marginal groups like the Tea Party get footing. It's because good citizens get burnt out. And there's a lot of very good citizens that have gotten burnt out over this capital budget. And I ask you, what are you going to do to repair this community? What are you going to do to move it forward? Are you going to support what goes forward on East Washington Avenue? Are you going to delay it in months and months of meetings? Or are you going to say, yes, we would like to see this in our community. We are committed. We're going to move forward. I was not given the opportunity to speak last evening. Otherwise, perhaps I could have swayed some opinions here. I don't have that option in front of me this evening, unless everybody wants to move reconsideration of Substitute Amendment 17. But we're, we're sort of past that now. And there's going to be a lot of fallout. At the end of the day, I'm confident that I did what was right for my district, what was right for the city of Madison. And there's probably heads that will roll. And I'm not concerned, because it's not going to be mine. So please think about what kind of city you want. Please think about what kind of city you want this to be. Because we're getting passed behind every day, guys. And you take the money that comes in from the university and from the students completely for granted. You take our economy for granted. And we don't get serious, ever. And it's all about process. And it's all about individual groups. 
getting to have their say. Guess what, guys? We are the body that gets to have their say. And so I ask that you think about that in the future moving forward to put the interest of the city before the interest of any one group. And I hope, and I, this is a tough job. Come on. There's some of you who have been here for decades. This is a tough job. And you get burnt out. And it's really easy to just pass and get by. Because you say, they'll all, you know, I can deal with it next week, or I'll, I'll, I'll recharge my batteries once this is over, and I'll just get through it. But I was very disappointed what I saw across the board last night. And I wish I could say it was only with specific members. But nobody, nobody hit their light to talk on this item? I'm out of the room for five minutes, and nobody hits the light for speech. And you all sit there silent on a $95 million project that will go substantially towards helping the city and what we need in community centers and park resources and underground street lighting. So thank you. I want to share a couple of thoughts with you. I would have preferred not to speak. But I think something needs to be said in regards to the culture of this body and the culture of the city as it relates to this capital budget. This capital budget is significantly lower than last year's capital budget. And I'm, I'm glad and I appreciate Council Member Schmidt bringing this up. We have a situation here that was created over a number of years and as somebody who has written and advocated for public investment in infrastructure as the most important mechanism in growing an economy and growing, a, growing jobs, quality jobs, it's not very enjoyable to have to see this kind of significant reduction in expenditures. The problem is, as most of you are aware, we cannot continue the trajectory to a point where we're spending 15 or 16 or 17 percent of our revenues on debt service if we expect to maintain police department, a streets division, a parks division, a fire department, a public health department. Tough decisions do not mean that people have to put a line between themselves and others. And I want to recognize and thank Council President Kinnair for the message that she sent out this afternoon. But there's one thing I want to be very clear about in regards to a spirit of cooperation. In defense of the city, in defense of the council, in defense of the city staff and all employees, I will not tolerate innuendo. I will not tolerate anything that reeks of Joe McCarthy and suggestions of impropriety and will call upon anyone who has such charges to come forward, be specific, and do what Senator McCarthy failed to do, name names. Have your evidence, have your documentation. There are certain principles about the integrity of government that we're going to honor. Some of them are fiscal, some of them are legal, and some of them are moral. And it's my obligation, and I hope it's all of yours, to ensure that all of them are met. Thank you.